Hey, everybody. I want you to meet my friend. This is a hornworm, actually. Well, good to see everyone again. Um, we'll get back to my hornworm in just a minute. Uh, a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we're back. We're back uh, checking out some different organisms. All right. So let me set the hornworm back down and, and let's quickly uh, take a look at some of the things that we found out uh, from last time when we were together. All right. So first of all, one of the things that uh, we were taking a look at was the mealworm. In fact, we did quite a few things with the mealworm. All righty. And uh, let's take a look at some of the things that we discovered. So as we were checking out the mealworm, uh, we were first, you know, getting uh, familiar with its body and deciding out what it had as far as its structure and function. Okay. And so we found out it has six legs. All right. Three body parts, something called an exoskeleton. So it didn't have a bones inside to support it. So it can't get super big, like as big as a human because it doesn't have bones to support it. Um, but the exoskeleton is like an outside body covering. All righty. So we were checking that out. Um, and then we did some experiments. We tried to decide which type of food they preferred. Um, we tried to find out if it preferred shade or light. And our data showed us we had 10 mealworms last time and we were seeing if they would prefer the shade or the light. So we did that, that experiment and we put them, remember, right in the, the middle here. And I think we found out that eight of them went to the shade and two preferred the light. And we talked, you had some great ideas of why that was going on. You know, why some of them preferred shade as opposed to the light. Okay, some of you were saying maybe they were hiding from predators. And a lot of you were thinking of heat, that because of that light, they may have preferred it because it's cooler there. Okay, so all those things come into play. Okay, all right. And then we did an experiment with food and we had a tray with some food on it or a plate with some food. And when we did that, we were seeing which one they would go to the most, okay? And I think we found out uh, strawberries were the ones that they seemed to prefer. And we had some good ideas of why they may have preferred that for food. Okay, now friends, um, we can say that they are insects because all insects have six legs and three body parts. We'll discuss the, the body parts in a little more detail later, but just real quickly, the main parts again are the head, the thorax where the legs are attached, and then the abdomen, which is usually the biggest part, okay? Uh, at school, sometimes I'll say, okay, everyone touch your head, touch your thorax if we were insects, and shake your abdomen. All right, kind of a fun little thing to do to help us remember what our head, our thorax, and abdomen are. Okay, well, guess what? Today what we're going to do is we're going to meet a couple new creatures. I showed you one right at the beginning, just real briefly, the hornworm, and we're going to check that out too. And we're also going to check in first on our mealworms again. All righty? Now, one thing that, that um, I also want to share with you is a scientific tool. And when we think of scientific tools, a lot of times we think of thermometers. We might think of other things that have to do with science. Um, but know what is a really strong, good scientific tool? A book, okay? A notebook, if you will, okay? I have about four or five different science notebooks. And what I do is I try to carry at least the smaller ones around with me. And what I can do then is put different things I, I see that relate to science wherever I am. Sometimes I'm even driving and I'll pull over into a parking lot if I think of something that I want to try and experiment and I'll write it down. Well, scientists use notebooks a lot, and a lot of times their notebooks are right on their technology, maybe a computer, an iPad, um, and keeping track of things, or you know, just recordings and video. Sometimes if I forgot my notebook, 
on my cell phone. I'll make a recording. And a lot of you have done that in sharing what you've been doing with your, your science investigations, okay? All right, so uh, today what we're going to do, since we're just coming back after being away from one another for a little while, we're going to check in on our mealworms, all right? And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, check out on a couple of new organisms, all right? So first thing that we're going to do, and we're going to be using a science notebook and a little, I'm going to use mine in a little bit. Um, and so you might want to have a piece of paper. You can pause right now if you'd like, but a piece of paper and colored pencils, maybe a pencil, maybe crayons if you have them, because we're going to be drawing some organisms again. And a lot of you drew them on your iPad last time, and that's fine. Some people like to draw them on paper and then upload them. By, I'm sorry, by taking a picture and then submitting the picture, okay, on Seesaw. So you can do that too. Either one is fine, okay, however you'd like to submit. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is going to be um, our mealworms, okay? So I'm just going to get our mealworms out first. All right, I'm gonna put them out and then I'll bring you over and we'll check them out. Okay, so we'll see if there's any change. And I had about 100 mealworms and so <laughs> there's a lot of them on this plate, okay? All right, I'm gonna move my camera around right now so that we can check out our mealworms. All right, so here we go. All right, so what I did is I went and I put them in this big plate. So we can see this is kind of what a lot of our drawings looked like before. So it was important in our science notebook. In fact, I have a drawing of, of one right up here in my science notebook. And I put down some things that, you know, that it had um, some different coloring and it had six legs and, and uh, sometimes it's good to add those details. But right now, um, just getting those pictures is great. Okay, well, wait a second. Now let's look here. I noticed this one. This does not look like a mealworm. Or is, and look at this one. These were all mealworms. Wow, okay. Let's look at this one first. Okay, I'll put that to the side, kind of give them some shade. We found out they, they preferred the shade. That looks a lot different. It changed. It grew. Okay, and look at it. its body changed quite a bit. Okay, and as I'm looking at that, wow, it's it moves too when I touch them. It'll go and it'll it'll wiggle its abdomen a little bit. Let's take the the mealworm we were looking at. Let's put that next to it. Okay. I'm going to put that right here just so we can compare. Interesting. I can still see the head and the thorax and abdomen, but they have definitely changed. Wow. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to put that just over here for a moment. i got to show you something else I picked up. Okay. Yeah. This next thing that I have, this next thing, it is called a super worm. Yeah, it's called a super worm. And let's take a look at this one now, okay? And I'm going to get them out of my container. I'll bring them over here. Wow, look at that. That, look how big it is. A super worm is a lot like a mealworm, okay? All right, in fact, it makes the same changes through its life cycle as a mealworm. All right, we're going to keep the superworm too, and we're going to be comparing it over time to see if its body changes. We're noticing that the body of the mealworm changed too. Okay, look at that superworm. Look how active it is. Wow, okay. It's about five times bigger than a, a mealworm. Okay, about five times bigger. Okay, now that's including like its width around its body. Okay, Whoa. what do we have another mealworm that changed here? Okay, I didn't see that one before. All right, 
we'll watch, like I said, we'll watch the superworm over time. I'm going to go and put the superworm right back in its container. So I have a container of, um, a container of superworms and, hmm, very cool. They have the six legs and everything. So, and the three body parts. So we're not going to draw them again, just because you've already drawn a mealworm. The superworm is just a bigger version of it. But like I said, we'll watch it over time. Okay. Now, friends, yeah, well, one of the things we're going to do is we'll be drawing this stage of the mealworm. It changed, okay? So today, in just a little bit, I'll show you in a science notebook how we're going to draw this stage, okay? All right. Now, next thing that we're going to take a look at is going to be another organism, Okay. All right, now this one kind of looks like a mealworm. I'm actually going to move my mealworm plate. Um, this one is called a waxworm, and I'm going to put it on a new plate, and I'll bring it right over here. Yeah, these are called waxworms. Now, think about why they might be called waxworms, okay? So I want you thinking about why they're called waxworms, all right? Why do you think they're called waxworms? Hmm, okay. Yeah, have you ever looked at like a wax candle? Yeah, they kind of look like that. All right, in some ways, they look a lot like mealworms, okay? They look an awful lot like mealworms. If we take a look, yeah, looks an awful lot like a mealworm. Well, so cool, all right? Awesome, all right. Wax worms. Look at that. Well, we'll we'll try to find out some more about wax worms later too. Okay. And then I mentioned to you right at the beginning when we started this thing called a horned worm. And I'm gonna put them on this side of the plate. Well, well now when I have it next to the wax worm, we can see that it is definitely bigger. Okay. And look at some of those things that it has on its body. Cool. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Look at those body parts. So we had our wax worm. We have a horn worm. Okay. I'm going to just get one mealworm so we could compare the size. Okay. Well, the, the, the larger mealworms, this isn't a super worm, but the larger mealworms are almost as long as the horn worm. Cool. All right. All right. I'm going to set this mealworm back. All righty. Now, friends, we are going to do a few draw. We're going to make a few drawings, okay? Three to be exact. We're going to draw a mealworm, but we're going to do the mealworm that's changed, that looks different, because we want to draw what it looks like today, okay? Then we're going to sketch a wax worm and then the horn worm. Now, before we started, before I started taping, I went and drew them already. Okay? So this is where you can do one of two things. We're going to, today, we're going to do three drawings. Okay? Three of them. One of the mealworm, one of the wax worm, and one of the horn worm. And we'll use some letters to abbreviate too so we don't have to write out the whole words. You can either draw them directly on Seesaw or what I like to do, to be honest with you, is I like to draw them on paper and then take the picture of the paper and then upload them. That way I can watch the video while I'm drawing because otherwise I'm kind of going back and forth. But you do whatever whatever is more comfortable for you. All right, well, let me show you my drawings and kind of how I did it. And I haven't drawn the mealworm that has changed, okay? So the first thing that I have down is I have mealworm, okay? So I have the mealworm and I put down how many legs it has and what it uses for gripping. You don't need to do that, friends, okay? And just so we know that it's a mealworm, you can go and just write MW, okay? But remember I said I want to do the mealworms that have changed. So I'm going to put that right here, this one. 
Okay, let me get some of his food out of the way. And I use what's called cornmeal or oatmeal. Okay, so this definitely looks different. So when I draw this one, I'll just set it here, I might draw kind of a thing that looks like this. And I might, I still see some segments, but it's definitely different. It's almost like a, a pointed tail. And I will also include some photographs that I have um, while you're drawing in case you want to, if you want to do that. Okay. So that is still a mealworm, but it's changed. So you're going to do a drawing like this. Okay. And again, you can just put mealworm. And then if you have colored pencils or crayons that you want to use, you know, you can use those. So I think this is a little bit of a kind of a, almost a yellow or a light brown. So I'll put that in there. So that's a, my mealworm. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is the waxworm. And so I'm gonna go down here and I drew one before. I didn't have a, yeah, I don't have a yellow colored pencil. In my whole house, I don't have one, okay? And so I drew a waxworm. Let me get a waxworm for us. I'll put it right here. And here is my waxworm, okay? And you can see that waxworm moving around there. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna draw that. And then after you draw it, kind of like I did, and you can put W wax, let's do um, WW for wax worm. Oh, moving fast right off there, okay? And I'll include some pictures of that too um, on Seesaw. So if you need to look at those, okay? Now, lastly, the hornworm. Yeah, that was the bigger one, kind of green, had those neat movements. And we're going to be watching these organisms over time, okay? We'll keep an eye on them over time. And so here's the hornworm. And so I made a drawing of the hornworm. Again, don't worry about the words that I have there. And I can put H, W for hornworm. All right, so I can put that there. All right, friends, so the three organisms that we're drawing are going to be what the mealworm looks like today, picture of the waxworm which we meant, met, you're gonna do a drawing of that, and then you're gonna do a drawing of the hornworm, and then you're gonna go ahead and upload those, okay? So we can find out more about them. Also, for bonus points, if you can also add a recording of one thing about one of these three that you're still wondering about. I had to do that before with the mealworm, but with one of the other ones, you can do that. But the main thing is drawing all three so we can keep track of them over time. All right, friends, have a great rest of your day.